Okay, so now that you're set up with um, a pen, tablet, uh, maybe some drawing device, if you are, I'm gonna need you to make some adjustments to your settings. If you're using a mouse, you can kind of leave it as it as it was, okay? But let's say if you do have a drawing tablet, um, navigation in Blender kind of relies on that idea of a three button mouse with the wheel as being the kind of the main navigation. And if you have a tablet, it's hard to kind of like mimic that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to preferences, edit preferences, and then up here, I wanna make sure that I check under input, emulate three button mouse, okay? Now, when I do that, I feel like it's weird that, you know, that it says emulate three button mouse, but I feel like what's happening is that now if I close this, I can hold down um, Alt, and when I just click my pen on the screen, it's gonna move like this. If I do um, Alt Shift, it's gonna move like this. And Alt, uh, let me see, yeah. Alt Control is gonna move like that. Okay, so I just kinda of do Alt. If I leave my hand on Alt, and then I can do Alt Control or Alt Shift, or if I just do Alt in general, it does like that. So again, that makes our life a lot easier as far as navigating in the um, you know the the sculpting mode here. Now the other thing too that I think I should um, be aware of is this idea of um, making our brush size bigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the brush size. Right now, if I press F, okay, if I press F it'll change the brush size. You can click on this and you can change it. Now I feel like just me reaching up to the F key, it's not necessarily super comfortable. So I feel like I'd rather tap the space bar. I feel like that's a lot uh, cleaner when I'm in sculpting mode. So I'm gonna go up here to edit, preferences. And again, I'm gonna come down here uh, to my key map. And this is where I can kind of change the key bindings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I can open this up just to make it a little bit bigger. And you can see that I can change my, just my normal preferences up here, but this is going to be a little bit different. Okay, I'm gonna to go to 3D view and then I'm gonna scroll down and then I'm gonna to go to sculpt, here it is. And then I can scroll down and then I can go to radial control is what it's called. So let me see if I can find it. So it's under sculpt global. If I open that up, I can see that there's a lot of things here. And if I come down here, um, here's radial control. Now remember when we pressed F, uh, that was activated our brush size. And I can see here it is. So I feel like if I wanna change it, I can just simply click on that. And now it says press a key. And I'm gonna press the space bar. And now space bar is now assigned to that. Okay, so now if I close this, if I tap the space bar, aha, it moves like that. Okay, so again, Alt, Alt Shift, Alt Control, just Alt and now spacebar will change my brush size. And then also I should point out that if I go to something like um, draw, if I click and drag, okay, that's going to be, uh, you can see that it's raising up and that's because it's on the plus. If I hit the minus, I can see it's digging into the character. Okay, I'm just gonna undo that, control Z, control Z. Um, but if I, if I draw, instead of going up here, I can also press control and, whoa, hold on here. Yeah, control should do the opposite. Hold on, let me see. So I have to hold down control and you can see that the first one cut in, and if I hold down control, it's going to do the opposite, okay? I can't just press control. Now, if I wanna smooth, 
I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to, I can kind of smooth over. Okay. Now, obviously I'm just kind of demonstrating, um, how to do things. I'm, I'm not really going to sculpt like that right now on him, but I feel like it's just good to get an understanding of what's going on here. So you could also change the strength and the radius up here. Again, I don't really recommend that. Again, if you're using a tablet, you want to make sure that this thing is checked because that's going to um, enable the pressure sensitivity of your brush. So what that means is, again, if I, I'm on this tool here, if I press really light, it's hardly going to have any effect. And then if I press hard, it's going to have a major effect. So you can see even within that one brush stroke, it's kind of like um, I can have kind of varying levels of intensity. The other thing I should mention, and I'm just going to hide these image planes for a second. The other thing I should mention when sculpting, it's good to see it kind of literally in a different light and different material. If I come up here, um, so I mean, this is wireframe and shaded, but if I come here, I can switch to different materials. So for example, like red wax, okay, like this. Um, I could also go to some of these other ones. And I feel like Again, it's great to be able to see your character in different, um, you know, kind of see how the shadows are picking up uh, at different things. This is no, by no means kind of a permanent or final material. It's just kind of a work in progress material that helps you see the form better, okay? And I often like to change between materials as I'm sculpting. So. If I click on this next one here, okay, um, this next one's gonna show textures if I had textures on. And if I go here, um, now I can change the environment that the character's in. So if it was like a reflective material, it would kind of, um, um, the reflection on there. And if I click on this next one, this is gonna be rendering and lighting. So if I have a light in the scene, I can actually see that light. Um, and this is the light so here's the light in the scene. If I click on that, um, I'm just going to go back to layout and I'm going to just hide this mask temporarily. I can take this um, and I can move this light. And you'll see that I don't see the, the um, I don't see the effect of the light right now because I feel like I'm not in the lighted mode. So if I go over here, now I can see the effect of the light and I can kind of see it live like that. Okay. So if I put it over here again, if I go back to sculpting, you can see that um, it's there. I could also go here without leaving it. I could go to like object mode and now I have my move and now I can kind of adjust the light. Um, you know, which is kind of cool if you wanted to um, see your form because it's going to look better if I uh, tell my viewport to be up these resolutions, I can kind of see that as well. But I'm going to go back to sculpt mode and um, I'm going to leave it at this one. I feel like this one's probably the best for our actual sculpting materials. Um, but don't forget we have these other modes that we can use. Um, and if we wanted to actually kind of use it in conjunction with other things, let's say we wanted to um, see it with kind of different things. Don't forget we can kind of pull this over and maybe this one. I could collapse that and I want to see this in maybe a lit mode. Okay. I could have this in lit mode and I can keep that right there. And then when I'm sculpting here, it's going to update over there and I can kind of see how my sculpts are responding. So again, just some neat tricks. I'm just going to close that. But again, um, just kind of getting introduced to the layout of how sculpting likes to be handled and also the preferences.